AMD's new Wraith CPU cooler increases the surface area of the aluminum heatsink by 24%, and it's a good deal larger than the previous cooler if you look at the two of them here side by side and even larger still than the cooler before that. The race reason for launch is primarily a refresh of the existing FX line, particularly the FX8370, and it is launching at the same price as the current FX8370 CPUs, but the old cooler will be available for $10 cheaper with the FX8370, so you pay $190 instead of $200. The Wraith cooler uses the larger heatsink surface area and it also has a new fan which spins at a significantly slower RPM and this is a good thing because the previous cooler, if you've ever used them, spins up to a maximum of about 5,500 RPM. We get 5,252 and the new cooler is about 2,947 RPM so it is almost half, it's about 40% of the original RPM and the cooling as you'll see momentarily is pretty comparable. So that does mean that the AMD stock coolers will finally stop making the shrill banshee shrieking noise that the uh, that the older models have made and that's something that we tested. So let's talk about all of that. You can view the test methodology linked in the description below. We've got that all in the article if you want to know how we tested, how our automation sort of works at a very top level and things like that to keep all of the testing accurate and fairly transparent. I'll also note quickly there's no objective decibel level analysis at this time because we don't have the tools for it right now we're investing in thermal and if we can't do it right we don't do it at all subjectively what I can tell you is that the old cooler at its maximum RPM is absolutely unusable this is the previous model not the new one so the old cooler was so loud and such a high frequency that anywhere beyond maybe the halfway point the 3000 RPM mark it was just unbearable and really caused a lot of stress to sit next to. So the new cooler, even at its 3000 RPM, is generally quieter than the system and GPU fans in our test bench, so that makes it more or less inaudible or imperceptible. And fan noise, or any noise, is logarithmic, so it's not really just as simple as saying you can add a couple more decibels and that's what you expect the output to be. But generally, you should expect a very slight increase in noise from the Wraith cooler. The old cooler was substantially louder to the point that it is actually the loudest device I've ever tested short of a server fan at 12,000 RPM or something like that. Let's look at something for which we do have objective benchmarks and analysis. So this chart shows the equalized temperatures for peak load averaged thermals on the different coolers on the bench. So we look at the thermals over time, there's another chart for that, and then we average the peak thermal area. There's a set area in every test where that happens. We average that, and then we get a value to three significant figures, which you can see here that we averaged out from a two significant figure measurement. And you can read all that in the article. So the AMD Wraith cooler at its maximum 2,900 RPM more or less was pushing a 41.074 Celsius, and that third figure is actually important here because if you look at the old stock cooler at its maximum loud RPM, it was pushing 41.078. So that is a very small, imperceptible, barely measurable difference. We can only measure it because we log for such a long period of time and we use accurate instruments. So it's unnoticeable to the average user except for one thing, and that's the RPM and the noise. So in order to achieve the same cooling performance as the Wraith, the old cooler had to operate at two times almost anyway, the speed, and that made it much louder. Its idle temperature was also a bit higher at 6.294 Celsius versus 4.836 Celsius of the Wraith, and that is, again, not really something you're going to notice in your rig, but it is just noteworthy because it shows a clear cooling advantage for the Wraith, and that is likely a result of its larger surface area. So even though they're about the same under load, the larger surface area of the fins will help drive down those thermals during idle periods just by nature of having more fins to sink the heat into and then dissipate it. Here's where it gets more interesting. So we take the old stock cooler and we clock it down, so to speak, to the same revs as the AMD Wraith at about 2,900 RPM. The noise level is fairly comparable from a subjective standpoint. It is not too different with the old stock cooler. And the cooling performance is actually noticeably different. So it's now about a five Celsius more or less gain for the stock cooler, the new one versus the old one. So you get 41.074 versus 46.9.
And that's, again, not super noticeable, but when you're talking about coolers, ultimately you're just fighting over a couple Celsius, and a five Celsius differential is actually pretty massive when it comes to the world of cooling, especially with air. If we look at something more standard for an aftermarket cooler, you can see the Enermax T40 fit up there at the top. That uses a 140 millimeter fan. It spins at much slower speeds, 1200 RPM, so it's significantly quieter to the point that your other fans will be louder, and this is true for most aftermarket coolers of this spec. It's a $40 cooler, so it's not just an Enermax thing. That is true for most of those coolers, and that is at 38.78 Celsius, so not a huge advantage over the Wraith or the old cooler even, at max RPM anyway, but the noise levels are, again, what you're looking at here. And it is, however, a big difference from the old cooler at 2,900 RPM. So if you want something that's quieter and more tolerable, then the Wraith would probably be the way to go short of buying an aftermarket cooler. And the Wraith is going to be about $10 more. So the, the price isn't changing of the 8370. still 200 bucks, but the old one goes down to 190. That makes the Wraith $10 more. And if you wanted to bump up to a sort of entry level air cooler, you'd be spending at least $25 on average from a uh, Hyper 212 to an AR01 or something like that. And that we think generally is worth it for anyone doing any kind of overclocking or prolonged system service life because you'll want that extra few degrees to help eke out more life from the CPU or the neighboring VRMs. And that's another thing we don't show here is that if you have a larger cooler, there is actually some potential to sink some heat from the VRMs, especially if there's vapor chambers invo involved. And the Wraith won't do that as much. But let's get to the conclusion here. So the Wraith is a good cooler insofar as stock coolers go. It is actually the best stock cooler out right now comparing against Intel, the old AMD, and the new AMD. And for that, we hope AMD will continue in the future because the Wraith is good enough that we can actually say if you're buying this CPU, you're not planning to overclock and you don't necessarily intend to have long system service life, then yeah, you can stick with the Wraith because it's a tolerable noise level and it's reasonably cool comparatively anyway. Now for anyone doing serious stuff, we still recommend aftermarket. And this isn't really addressing the question of buying an FX processor or AM3 Plus platform at all. We're just talking about coolers here because generally my feeling anyway and the kind of feeling of the site is that the FX line and AM3 Plus line are old enough now, five years old with AM3 Plus, that it's sort of becoming an odd choice to buy because Zen's right around the corner. If you really want AMD and Intel is just cooler and quieter and perform similarly for games, it's a different story sometimes with certain applications. But generally speaking, the older architecture is a bit more difficult to work with. It's got PCIe limitations. It's got USB 3 non-native limitations. So you have to get an aftermarket chip soldered onto the board and create USB 3.0 that way, and it just kind of becomes a little messy when you start doing that sort of stuff. You can create issues with I.O. transfer rates or hands and freezes and things like that, which don't happen on many of the platforms out there, but they've certainly happened on some of the ones we've tested. So generally, AM3+, Plus, FX, I'm not a huge proponent of recommending at this point because the other processor is so close, but... If you are buying one, then probably do get the Wraith model if you plan to not use an aftermarket cooler because it is substantially better than the old stock one. If you're buying an aftermarket cooler, well, I just gave you the answer. You buy the old one and you throw out the cooler. So that is all for this. I hope to see AMD continue the Wraith CPU cooler with their next line as the CPUs hopefully become more relevant again. And the LED on the side is kind of a nice touch. There's a white LED on the side of it, but you know, it's an LED. So not much to say about that. Thank you for watching. Check the Patreon link in the post roll video to help us out directly or hit the link in the description below for the full test methodology and more information. And I'll see you all next time.